said, lesson number two is, I have given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. So, like in that specific case, there's, it's coming from a belief that a working computer <coughs> is more valuable than a broken computer. But really they're the same. Why? They're, they're both illusions. Why? They both share the same purpose, actually. A broken computer and a working computer share the same purpose. Forgiveness. It just sees the false as false. It sees all the images are the same. A broken body and a healed body, they're the same. A crucified body on the cross with blood coming out of the arms and legs, and a healed body taking a walk on a sunny day, they're the same. Everything is the same because everything was made by the ego, and there's no hierarchy of illusions, and there's no differences really. There's only one ego, and there's really the image of the world that it seemed to project is, is one with that ego. It's all, in a healed mind, you just see everything is completely unified. And I'm certainly happy to go into quantum physics and give the scientific explanations of all these things too, as well as the Course in Miracles vernacular. But, but once you start to see that the investment comes from the belief that there's a difference. For example, a working computer is more valuable than and one that's not working, or a working car is better than the one that's not working. And what we see as we go forward, you know, you know, if we're coming into that alignment with let all things be exactly as they are. Um, even in terms of relationships, it seems like it's all relative in terms of the meaning. Like people will say, marriage, oh, great, great, marriage, celebrate, celebrate, party, 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 divorce, oh, oh. Too bad. That's too bad. You know, listen, if, if you're following the ego and getting married on ego advice, hmm, that's not a good thing. And if you're following the Holy Spirit and getting a divorce based on guidance from the Holy Spirit, that's a really good thing. You see, it's the purpose that's behind the, the action that's all important and how that contradicts the standards of the world, which says, you know, for example, in most cultures, birth is something to celebrate. That's why we have birthdays. They don't celebrate death days. Oh, it's your dad's death day. How many years has he been dead? Well, twelve. Okay, let's celebrate. It's his death day. No, no. They celebrate, they celebrate the birthdays. Why do they celebrate the birthdays and not the death days? I don't know. I, <laughs> it, it could be flipped around. Yeah, yeah. The party, you know, it could be flipped around in different cultures. But that's the thing is that is that if it's just meaning that's read into things about what's good and what's bad, and there is no universal agreement. Like we could have the Mexicans could be like the exception. If you have an exception, then it's like okay, there it goes. It's it's just uh, it could be this or it could be that. It, that could be either way, and it's it's the same. I mean, I had a friend one time who came over, and his whole business, his whole career was was computer technology and and working with computers and everything. And he came to visit me one day. This was many years ago, kind of in the early years of computers, of PC computers. And he came and he was visiting with me. And he said, "Can I just check out your computer?" And I said, "Go ahead, go ahead." So he went on and he went, "Oh my God." <laughs> David, your computer has no, no virus protection on it. It's just totally vulnerable. It's just, and I'm like, I have my Course in Miracles search on it, and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know if I'm doing, maybe email, Course in Miracles search, and whatever. You know, he's like, oh, it's vulnerable. It's, oh, this is terrible. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. I can't believe you have no virus protection. So he, he goes into his tool bag and he gets his software and everything and he goes to work feverishly like there's going to be some virus that's going to come and just destroy the computer that afternoon and just feverishly to get my computer protected. And he's working, working, working and he works for hours. I'm just sitting there we're talking with him about the course and ideas and it's really not in the form and it's all in the mind and it's a backdrop really, us two at the computer. And finally, he's trying to get this virus, this antivirus protection loaded on, 
and the whole thing crashes. <laughs> the whole computer crashes, and his face just, oh my God. I said, what? What happened? He said, don't you know, it's the worst thing that could ever happen to a computer. It's a total crash. I said, really? And he's like, no, David, you don't understand, it's terrible. And, and he kept looking into my eyes, and he started to finally get what I was talking about. The Holy Spirit was like using the computer in a major way to talk about miracles to get beyond the form. But it was his whole conditioning. He was identified. Every issue is really a question of identity. He was like identified as being, worked for a university and their whole, their whole systems of computers. And in my case, it was the, un, the beginning of the undoing of what he thought he knew, of the I know mind about computers. And when I had the group of students back in the 1990s, we would sit down and I would, I would say, does anyone think they know something? They would all raise their hands and some were like nurses, they knew about the body and the systems of the body and medicine and some thought they knew about computers and some thought they knew about business and everything. And we would go into it deeper and deeper I would take them down more to the I don't know mind, which is much more honest. It's much more honest to look at this world and say, I don't know. I mean, you, you're being very honest. It's very humble to, to get to that point, but it, it took a lot of practice. So these kind of things that seem to fall apart, break down, or even if you notice you have an investment. You know, maybe you're dating someone and you're dating, 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 you know, dating, dating, and you're hoping you can get a relationship going, whatever that means, you know get to a certain point where it turns into a relationship. Mysteriously, when people say, are you in a relationship, what does that really mean anyway? How do you know that you're in one? And you know, what, How do you cross that line? When are you out and when are you in? When are you out and when are you in, right. I mean, you know, you can ask that about a lot of, a lot of things in this world, but there are all these definitions, and then you subtly notice that you are rooting for certain outcomes. And then wanting to use the mind and the mind training to get the outcomes. And it's kind of a contradiction. In fact, that's why a lot of spiritual teachers talk about the, the magic of manifesting and the power of manifesting. And I teach that manifestation is impossible. So that's very popular, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, it's like, I have really well attended seminars uh, when I teach that manifesting is impossible. But if if everything is mind and everything is unified, what would that even mean? You know, there is, there is really nothing that's separate. And and when we talk about taking something from thought and making it manifest in form, the form part is the illusion part. It's just a trick, as if it's not the same as everything else. And that's where the fragmented perception comes in. <laughs>